Good morning, Jew. Or should I say, good evening, Jew? Yeah, let's just be on honest. Good <laughs> evening, Jew. Today's evening, Jew. I'm Heather Gold, and today I'm in Toronto. And I'm Katie Halper in Narrowsburg, New York. Narrowsburg. Narrowsburg. The country house. The country, as you can see from the drapes behind me, which are floral. We don't do that in the city. Yeah. What is what is country for the Jews? Is it the country just to go to the farmer's market? Yeah, how far do you have to no. go? No. Well, yeah, I mean, for <laughs> we call it upstate. It's not even upstate. It's like west of New York. And it's as wilderness as I could get. It's like um, uh, around the corner from Main Street. Okay. So, yeah. You're close. Yeah. You're close to a nosh. So today, it's uh, we're going to go through the end of 2013, the year. We're going to look back at the best and worst of the year. Maybe think a little bit ahead. So, Katie, uh, what was the best thing for the Jews? You know, I'm going to go as a kind of... I'm going to go as a kind of rabbinical, you know, surprising answer and say it was the Tila, Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila? Is that how you Tila say it? Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila. She yeah. was the best thing for Her. the Jews in 2013 because. Well, she she defended um, Adolf Hitler. I don't know if you know the story. You probably do. But she I, dressed up. I only um, know that she put on like a Nazi outfit when she looked desperate. Yeah. Like she wasn't going to be in the press anymore. And she said, yeah. how can I get back in the media? Hitler outfit. Nazi, Nazi Hitler outfit. outfit. We've all we've all thought that. Imagine a Nazi Halloween outfit, like sexy Nazi. <laughs> yeah. That was it. So it was a Facebook photo of herself in a in a swastika armband and a and a uniform hat and then like a little skirt type of thing. Um, standing and then like cat of, ears, like cat ears. Yeah, sexy Nazi, and in front of Auschwitz. Um, she, and and Aus- then, she she even knows what Auschwitz is. I know. I think she. I think on Wikipedia they have a. You a lot. have. This is the most shocking media moment of my year. I know. Holy crap. Um. Yeah, it's a, it's like a little thing, and she, we'll, we'll we'll have a picture. But she has a gun, um, and maybe that. Yeah, yeah. There's an Auschwitz on the back, and they're she's standing on train tracks, which is great because it's really symbolic of the whole, you know, sending Jews on trains. So she made it really, as a work of art history, it's really impressive. Um, and then she, she said went to that some lengths for a reality TV star. I used to be well known for doing soft porn, and got a lot of friends in MySpace and her bisexuality. Well, um, I mean, that worked then. I think being bisexual has already jumped the shark for her. Yeah, that's so last, like, last de- last decade. And now, basically, hit- Nazi is the new bisexual. That's what we found out this year. But um, but it's not just Nazi. It's like, I had to go to Auschwitz and stand on the train tracks, Nazi. Right, right. You're like, within the Nazi hierarchy, this is pretty high up. But she said that um, Hitler was re- was a special and sweet kid who was rejected by art school and bullied and she compared her suffering when she apparently tried to convert to Judaism she con- compared her being mocked and rejected um, to what Hitler went through and then she said I never hate, said I hated anyone but just because I feel sympathy and compassion and forgiveness for others such as Hitler means I'm now a monster all, I'm f- all for trying to open your eyes to the truth that Hitler was not as bad as he was pointed out to be Painted out to be, actually. It was a pun because he's an artist. All for trying to open your eyes to the truth that Hitler was not as bad as he was painted out. And you think this is the best thing for the Jews Jews. in 2013? It's up there. It's up there because she's ridiculous and an idiot. And she's the best person to be associated with Nazism. If we want Nazism to be discredited, there's like no better person to do that than Tila Tequila. That is an interesting take. So what you're saying is Nazism is bottomed out. It can't even get on the love boat anymore. It's so, like, D-list. It's below, so beyond D-list. It can't even get it. I was once an internet. Person. Yeah, she's she's so much more powerful than any Steven Spielberg documentary on the Shoah. In term- Here's my sense of what the best thing for the Jews was in 2000, in last year, 2013. Oh, you didn't think Tila Tequila also? I'm, no, I'm I did it. That didn't. That didn't come to me. Here's a lot of the big stuff that happened last year. We had... Incredible tech douchebaggery. We had Rob Ford saying unbelievable stuff. A crack addict, mayor of Toronto, who just lied and lied and said one outrageous thing after another. And it's apparently involved Very good a lot comedy. of drug. We had, you know, uh, you know, Snowden and and uh, letting everybody know about the NSA has been spying on everyone in America. We had Obama's 
website for the healthcare system just did not work at all. It's still not working very well. And yet, and yet, not a single one of these things has bupkis to do with the Jews, which is awesome. Right. Which is awesome. Basically, so, we had a year full of all kinds of crap that you can't peg on any of us, really, for the most part. So it was a year shape. of Jew-free disaster. Well, Non-Jew-attributable. The, biggest, the biggest, the things that seem the most conspiracy-ish, the most like the government spying on you, turns out right. they are. Right. Not us. You know, like, we Not did us. pretty good. So that the best thing for the Jews, 2013, was like Rob Ford, Paula Dean, all these people, honestly. Right. They're great. They couldn't be less Jew. I mean, almost less Jewish than Tila Tequila. Like, Goyan. Like, who's the most Goyish? Right. That's a real competition to I have between Ford them. I think Rob Ford may be the most. Rob Ford Cavell of the year, which is what we're going to call it, right? This is sad, though, but it's. But Aaron Swartz. For his his suicide? Not for his suicide. No, for being, he was okay. actually, I was reading stuff Tell about him. Tell people who Aaron Swartz was. Oh, okay, you probably have a better understanding of him because you're much be- bigger I than the tech. I went to a service world. for him. I didn't go to the oh. service, but I went to a service when he when he died. So he was this genius who helped start Reddit, and he was really into um, internet, like open access stuff. And yeah. he, um, at MIT, he downloaded all these articles from JSTOR that you have to pay a price for. And he it's was an very concerned with... an academic journal system. An academic journal system, yeah. And um, I read... I was looking at him, uh, about him, and I came across him. I knew who he was, but I was looking at Jewish, like, Jewish progressives and stuff. And there were all these Jewish, religious Jews who had written about him and said how grounded in Judaism his stuff was. Like, they, they quoted Maimonides, and they quoted... Um, different passages of the Old Testament, none of which I can remember, but like about um, leaving your road, the corners of, for the poor people. And basically they were saying he was upset that um, that it was such a, you know, there was so much um, elitism and so much disenfranchisement kind of online. He was where a copyright if you activist a who country, cared a lot about open yeah. access and it was a sort of political principle that he was fighting right. around downloading then, these academic journals for which he was really persecuted pretty heavily by the government. Now, he did a lot of other activism around open access, including being a real leading advocate against SOPA and PIPA, which made a little bit bigger news a couple of years ago. Right. And he, and also, so that he's Jewish in, in his activism way, and then he's Jewish in his, like, you know, love of knowledge, right? Um, and I read all these rabbis talking about it, and... Um, Fascinating. It's really sad, but I think he was one of the best, you know, I, I just feel like I was, he's someone I'm proud to to be on my team. That is a nice Although way really of putting sad. it. It is Cause sad. Because then what happened is they prosecuted him really hard and he wound up committing suicide. They went after him, they threw the book at him to make this big symbolic um, right. case and like it bankrupted him practically and kind of took his life. I mean, he had other mental health issues. I mean, he had right. other stuff going on. Right. Which you doesn't, um, but uh, do, do they have that in the DSM? Does it just say Jew in there somewhere? I think all of them are under. It, it, I think the Jew is the first heading, and then everything else is it's colon. Then the other diseases. Um, I wanted to fell for Sotomayor. I feel like she had a good year, and she's very New York and, and yes. ethnic, and to me, that's half Jewish. Well, you just reminded me of someone who I didn't have, but I'm going to put him in, and I can't remember his name, but he had an Oregon, a bar mitzvah in Oregon, and basically did this wonderful takedown of uh, the definition of uh, traditional marriage. The secular press called it a bar mitzvah speech, which is fine for me, but basically he went through how the Torah gives all these definitions of, of traditional marriage that we no longer accept as traditional marriage. So why can't we accept that there are other types of marriage that, you know, once were not cons- acceptable, but are acceptable now? And I love when religious people actually do things for good. It's so rare. It's true, and it's such a moment of like, like we, with the Pope. Oh, that was what the part of your whole thing was, your religion was. That's exactly. nice. I, you've remembered. He's, good for you. It almost makes religion seem remotely interesting for a minute. He said, the definition of traditional marriage has changed a lot since the days of the Torah. Why can't it change just a little bit more so everyone can marry who they love? He's our only hope. He's the anti-Pope. Marriage equality, we had a big year on marriage equality. Yeah. Now we're up to 18 okay. states. Uh, including Utah, which is amazing. So, I mean, that's one of the compelling things of the year. Anything that makes so-called traditional Christian values not be the supposed way things are done is good for the Jews. Shonda of the year. I have a couple of nominees. 
All right. I'm going to um, probably go with uh, at one option, Sheryl Sandberg, the COO oh, of wow. Facebook and the author of Lean In. Is it because of Lean In or something else that she did? Sheryl Sandberg <laughs> put out this book with a press, like an incredible amount of PR and organizing. Incredible amount. And then announced that this was a giant grassroots feminist movement. Now, it's interesting use of the word grassroots. Because you need to have some grass or some roots involved for it to be grassroots. Couldn't be more the opposite. It's very Orwellian use of the word grassroots. A, a grassroots movement is about is not about the leader and branding right. them. It's about supporting and making change that's needed right. and putting that first. So that's that's what I think is a bit of a Shonda there. Which isn't to say she doesn't have good to say or to right. offer. Or useful advice. I'm only saying that to then couch that as a general grassroots Social movement justice. that's changing everything for all women is just beyond inaccurate and probably just an aspiration towards I'm guessing political office. Okay, that's my take on her. It's Michigas. The bigger Michigas Shonda, it probably, because I'm going to call him Shonda the year almost every year, Woody Allen. So I'm going to go, yeah, you're Sh- Shonda. It's I'm tough. A Shonda you can almost England. every year just go Rowan Polanski, Woody Allen, Rowan Polanski, Woody Allen. Right, exactly. Okay, you're Shonda. Thank God for R. Kelly. Thank God for R. Kelly. You know Kelly, what? It's we true. Would have, like, it's true. A monopoly. It's true. Got, got to share it. My Shonda of the year are the, it's a toss up. At first, I thought it was those maybe those rabbis who would charge women a uh, hundred thousand dollars to kidnap and uh, strong arm and torture their husbands into forcing them into giving their wife a get, which a, is their divorce, a religious divorce, which is like a pretty right. it's a pretty big shanda when you're like I'm doing the most religious act I can think of in the most perverse right. way, like in the God name of being a rabbi, to charge you an arm and a leg to torture your husband. But then I was like, I don't know. Are they outshined by the husbands who refuse to divorce their wives? No. It's bad, but they didn't, did they phys- huh? It's tough because, no, it's, oh, it's, it's a it's tough one. It's not like a divorce in the secular society. It's like you're totally shunned. You know what I mean? Like you can't, no, you it's have a to kind have your of, stamp of approval. It's a kind of control, but it's, it's not I'm a rabbi, I'm physically torturing you in the name of religion. They're both horrible. It's tough. Right. Kind of the Shonda Olympics. Shonda. It's the one time Jews can participate in Olympics. Like, the best thing that could happen for the Jews this year. The best thing that could happen for the Jews this year? How about a Jewish basketball player? Wow. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Like a pro? Someone in the pros? Yeah. Pro. Like a Jewish Winter Olympics hero at Sochi. That would be good. That gay th- or not gay? That can't, yeah, but that would be something. I mean, how ha- that that wouldn't make make Putin very happy, would it? That would that would help a little. No. Make the point. Yeah, it would. It'd be like not only did we come here, but like a Jew lost really fast. You counted us out, mm-hmm. but Jew lost. The the newest menace, the Jew lost. You thought we already had, you know, banking and Hollywood and literature and so many other things under belts. Now we own the luge too. God, how sweet that would be. Well, to be Katie Halper, I hope you have a well, wonderful Heather time. Gold. I wish everybody out there a, a nice Roman calendar New Year. Yes, very nice. Three months into our year. Not to be confused with the Roman Polanski calendar New Year. I know. He could call, I think his middle name's calendar, Roman calendar Polanski. That would be amazing. Just to fit who in knows? a little bit more. Roman, you're probably not watching the show because you're one of the people who doesn't watch it because you know we don't like you. But if want anyone out there who's friends with Ronan, you want to give him a call, ask him about his middle name, we'll tell our viewers We'd be next interested. episode. All right. Yeah. See you later, Jew. All right. Bye. Bye.